Happy second episode of Hot News, my friends. Welcome back to the tech news that's going on in the world. Don't forget to hit the like button on this episode and get subscribed so that you're staying up to date on all that's happening in the tech industry, which the big thing right now is space. Internet is finally coming to you. Starlink Internet from SpaceX has officially opened up for you to register in case you want to pay $100 a month for the internet from space. Fully refundable $99 pre-orders that might take six months or more to fulfill mid to late 2021 is what's happening. Reese is potentially looking into this because he has garbage internet in South Africa and his date for getting it would be 2022. $99 fully refundable deposit, which would be $99 a month for the service, but then $499 a month to get the satellite and all of that set up, which in case you missed Linus Tech Tips video on it, you can check it out right up there. It has some very, very expensive components in it, very well engineered craftsmanship to it. So it's actually probably losing them money is essentially what Elon Musk confirmed on Twitter that with somebody wanting a lower price, he said that they need to pass through a deep chasm of negative cash flow over the next year or so to make Starlink financially viable. Every new satellite constellation in history has gone bankrupt. We hope to be the first that does not with the SpaceX satellites and then also the receiver kit everybody's going to need. It's going to be very hard on them financially in order to get this done. But according to initial results it seems very good this is obviously without a whole lot of people joining the network and this is an internet that wouldn't make sense for you to pick up if you already have decent broadband internet in your area but if you happen to live in the rural backwoods of wherever you are and you can't actually get broadband this might be your best option at hundred dollars a month it's not terribly unaffordable it actually would be cheaper for me because it has unlimited data i would get slower speeds but then i wouldn't be paying fifty dollars a month for unlimited internet and that fifty dollars a month would pay itself off over 10 months and then i could also bring it with me to my new house and i actually wouldn't have to set up anywhere if i ever move this act i wasn't gonna but now i'm gonna this is gonna save me money Although if I move to a different area, I might not have to pay for unlimited data, but that's, I mean, not having a data cap is huge. Obviously they might institute a data cap at some point, which would suck, but I don't know, should I do it? You guys let me know down in the comments. Should I sign up for SpaceX Sterling? Cause right now I'm paying $193 a month for gigabit internet, which is a thousand down, which I don't use, but it's so I can get the 35 up. Okay, that's that's what I need. I upload YouTube videos, so I need I get 35 up and that's the best I can get with Cox. That's all they give me. SpaceX actually seems to give me about that as well. I think the initial reports were somewhere in the 25 to 30 region, but for half the cost, I'm intrigued. But Elon Musk is not intrigued in going public with the company until cash flow is reasonably well established, according to him on Twitter as well. So don't necessarily get your hopes up to invest in SpaceX stonks. And don't necessarily get your hopes up that Apple isn't going to continue to dominate the world because according to a recent report that just came out, Apple is accounting for 53% of TSMC's five nanometer orders, which is absolutely absurd. Crypto and other things is 8%. Nvidia and AMD combined are gonna be 8%. And Qualcomm's the next big challenger at 24%. Apple taking over with all of the SOCs that they're making for iPhones and iPads, and now with all of their Apple Silicon going into their MacBooks and upcoming desktops potentially, they are just taking everything from TSMC. Wow. And Apple's took everything from you if you had to buy any of their chargers over the years because they kink and they fray and they just split right open. Well, according to a new patent, they're actually working on a charging cable that wouldn't fray as easily, which obviously just means that they're going to charge you $100 for this cable that's not any thicker, but is durable. You either pay $50 for the one that breaks or $100 for the one that breaks just a little later on. Which last week we talked about how they were going to break your wallet with their potentially $1,500 to $2,000 augmented reality headset. Well, we got some reports on their virtual reality headset with 8K displays and over a dozen cameras coming in at $3,000, according to the latest rumor indicating the price point of it, late stage prototypes, the image of it kind of looking right there. Obviously, they have to be targeting enterprise with this. This is not something a consumer would use. This is not something that makes VR more accessible. But if they somehow design super great developer applications for it, then the software could be worth it. And this might be a great business expense to specific companies. And 
actually would be usable. It's not right now, but who is heading up that division? We have now learned the AR and VR device is going to be their former hardware leader. Dan Riccio is now going to be the person who's overseeing a AR and VR for Apple. And I oversaw the launch of the Audi e-tron GT yesterday, just in that I heard about it, not because I'm responsible for anything that's going on with it. And it is a looker, this electric Audi that's coming out. The Audi e-tron GT RS looking like a snack. Very beautiful, very good. Uh, we'll talk about the specs in a second. I just kind of want to appreciate just how gorgeous this thing is. I never used to be a fan of an Audi until I sat in one. And then I got to see a lot of R8s on the road in South Africa. Africa and I think I think I'm a pretty big fan now let's talk about specs which I'm less of a fan of because it looks like it's only going to have a 93 kilowatt hour battery with the zero to 60 time of 4.1 seconds on the low end version and 3.1 seconds on the high end version and 155 mile an hour top speed but comes in at a base price of $100,000 with the additional one coming in at $150,000, which just makes it equivalent to the Porsche Taycan and actually is roughly the same specs as the Porsche Taycan, but not quite matching what the Tesla Model S Plaid is going to be. So in case you're an Audi fan, this would be the electric car for you. But in case you're a Porsche fan, then the Taycan's the car for you. And then in case you want the best electric experience, you go with Tesla, unless you care about the quality of the car at all, in which case you, you go for Porsche or Audi at this point, especially when you're spending $100,000, you kind of want a nice car and Apple doesn't seem to have all that figured out. Maybe it'll change with the refresh that's coming out for the Model S, but we'll just have to wait and see. Which speaking of, I actually have an incredible plan that's coming out around the refresh Model S, so get subscribed to UF Tech to find out more about it when it drops. And Pixel wants to detect a drop in your heart rate with their cameras as well as your respiration rate. They're now going to use the cameras on the back side of the Pixel phone and the front side to track your wellness. You breathing too heavy there, Jimmy? Okay, I can see you. I see you. You you go take your inhaler, Jimmy. Yes, mama. Yes, mama is what I'm saying to Qualcomm's new X65 5G modems that they've just announced, which are supposed to get up to speeds of 10 gigabits per second. This is the now latest version of it succeeding what went into the Snapdragon 888, which just recently launched the Snapdragon 865 modem is going to be high speed probably won't show up until 2022 in consumer devices. So you'll have to wait a little bit for that, but you don't have to wait anymore to get rid of your friends, <laughs> at least because Snap doesn't want you to forget to remember to get rid of them. They're now going to have friend checkup feature that is going to just remind you, hey, you sure everybody who's on your Snap friend list, you still you still want them to be seeing all your snaps? Okay, make sure that they're, they're not seeing your goods, okay? I don't know, what do the kids use Snap for these days? Why is it still around? I feel like all of the other apps have taken over. I don't really hear of people using Snap these days anymore. It had like its peak and then it drifted off. I'm too boomer for this. And I'm also too boomer for Instagram Reels, but they announced a feature which just seems like a bad idea in my mind. They're now going to no longer promote recycled TikToks on Instagram Reels, which just the the irony of a TikTok clone not allowing clone TikToks onto their platform is hilarious, first of all. But then secondly, this is going to go in one of two ways. Number one, this is going to be that if people cannot easily upload their TikToks to your platform, they're just going to stop using it. Or number two, it's just going to result in people uh, filming things to their gallery and then uploading it to them to the various platforms as opposed to filming it on TikTok initially and then porting it over, just filming it by themselves and then porting it over. But TikTok has a lot of like integration with cutting amps and filters and stuff that actually makes the TikTok. So I don't, I think this is just the death toll for reels. I don't think this is going to do the service any good to get rid of low quality content as they're calling it. You're just getting rid of exactly what your platform is made for, which is a knockoff of what you knocked off. Boy. And you better knock off not knowing the lyrics to your favorite songs because Spotify is rolling out the beta version of live lyrics in the US. They already rolled it out to 27 other countries and now the US is getting it, but you better learn the words, okay? That's my favorite part of music is mouth things. Instant regret. While I consider what I don't want to say, 
Disney's considering that they don't want Blue Sky Studios to say anything anymore with them shutting that down. The studio that was responsible for Ice Age, Rio and Robots no longer going to be a thing. Obviously, they acquired it when they purchased Fox and now just go away, Blue Sky. We don't we don't need you anymore. Disney's just going to own all of it. But you do need safe drinking water, which the people of Oldsmar, Florida might not have had if a city employee hadn't caught a hack that was happening where somebody tried to turn up the sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, from 100 parts per million to 11,100 parts per million, which just, you know, might be deadly and not good for people. It, it would be a bad thing. But thankfully, there was a watchful employee who saw that the hacker was trying to do that. However, the city says, oh, please, if they had done that, we have other fail safes that totally, you know, we didn't neglect our cybersecurity. It just, you know, this stuff happens and we totally have other fail safes that we didn't neglect, even though somebody told us that we were in danger of this happening. We just boy how did we came close on that one well i think we all know somebody attempted to poison the water hole and i'm gonna stop attempting to poison your minds with this episode of hot news thank you so much for watching it don't forget to check out the first episode of hot news in case you missed it in the corner right up there we got a little card that drops down allegedly hit the like button if you enjoyed this one get subscribed so you can stay up to date on the tech news we've got more coming for you tomorrow i've been brett your host and i'll catch you in the next one my friends have a good day